Hey, how are you doing? Scotty from Scott's Bass Lessons again. Hope you're well. If you haven't checked out scottsbasslessons.com yet, make sure you do so straight after this video because there is dozens and dozens, in fact, hours of free lessons just like this one. And if you subscribe as well to my newsletter on scottsbasslessons.com, I will also send you subscriber-only videos that it's got, you know, it's my, some of my special stuff that isn't on YouTube, so check that out as well. Today, we're going to be deconstructing the riff that you just heard at the beginning of this video. And I'm going to take you through piece by piece talking about why it works over the chord I'm playing on, specifically so you can take these ideas and theories and apply them to your own grooves and bass lines as well. So I'm just going to play the play the riff without the backing track now and then we can do it with the backing track later. By the way, if you have, if you want the backing track, you can just hit that link below the video and download it straight from the page. So, it's on an E7 groove, this, this um, riff, and the notes of the E7 groove, it's important that we know the notes of the E7 because then we know what we're playing and how that is relevant to the chord we're playing over, that's really important, okay? I always say to my students, make sure you know why you're playing what you are, okay? Don't just play a riff and just think, yeah, wicked riff. Make sure you think, oh, yeah, that's a wicked riff. It works because of this, that, and the other, you know? It works because of that chord, this chord, you know? Try and work that out into your playing. So the E7 sound or chord that we're playing over is this arpeggio, okay? And this is the main proportion of this riff, is built around this arpeggio. E7 dominant, okay? So E, G sharp, B, D, and E. Again, E, G sharp, B, D, E. Okay, and um, uh, all I've done is I've taken that arpeggio and then I've, you know, I've put a funky, funky rhythm basically to it and made it into a riff. But there's something I'm, I'm using that I like to call an, a, the chromatic approach, and this is what I've kind of built this entire riff around really to kind of get this over so you can try and put this into your grooves as well. Now, if we listen to the riff, I'll just play it now two, three, four. You'll hear that, you can hear that chord throughout, you know, you can hear that E7, but there's a lot of notes in there that aren't of the E7 tonality. And what I'm doing is I'm actually sliding into the arpeggio and using the slide as a chromatic approach note to a chord tone. So if our arpeggio is E, G sharp, B, D, E, the first note of the riff is actually a G but it slides in, so it's two, three, four. It's a slide from the G to the G sharp. And then I play the flat seven of the E, of that chord, so. And then I do the same thing with the fifth here. I slide into the fifth, so I use a non-chordal no note, then slide into um, one of the chord tones, which is the fifth. So. There I hammered it on, but you can slide. Like that. And then I hit the E. And then the open E. Again, two, three, four. Three, four. Once again, really slow. Three, four. So that's the first part of the riff. The next part is just, which is a G and an A. Now that G isn't part of that E7 tonality, 
but it is part of the E minor blues scale. And uh, that's what I kind of thought, yeah, it's going to give it that minory bluesy vibe. And that's why I use that note there. So right from the start of the riff, it's one, two, three, four. Now what I recommend you do is just learn that first part and loop it round and round. When you're learning any riff like this, when you're trying to get your fingers around it, you know, the fingering correct and stuff like that, just loop a part of it instead of sort of, you know, trying to do the entire thing and messing it up over and over again. Just take small parts of something, break it down, because that way you're going to have a, a, a better chance of learning it and get it into your playing. So again, two, three, four. So I'm just going to loop it four times. Now let's look at the second time round. It's very similar to the first, but I've got this funky. And the, again, I'm sliding chordal notes here. We'll get to that in a minute. So from the top. Three, four, second time. So you play that part again. And then I'm going. I'm just doing a slide, there I went from the E, but I'm just sliding up on the D string. So I'm going, and then I hit that E on the D string, then A, E, so. So. And then the last bit, which is the coolest bit. Now here I'm kind of sliding up and then, oh yeah, it's that. I'm sliding from, these are not related to the chord at all and these are, it's the seven of the E, the flat seven, which is the D. And then it's the third, which is the G sharp. So if you just hold your fingers in that shape there, your first finger on the, yeah, that's the finger that I was just checking that was the right fingers I was using there. So the first finger on the D, then the second finger on the G sharp, I almost, well, I don't almost, I do. I just slide in like that. Over and over, over and over again. Two, three, four. Oops. And that's the second time round the riff. So the first time, let's play it at a relatively slow tempo. Two, three, four. really really slow so you can get it okay two three four dead notes I'm adding in as well and that's kind of what it gives it gives it its funky vibe now a dead note is where I'm picking a note with it's, just, it's like a percussive thing so if I take it really slow let's see where I'm putting it in okay so there's a little bit there so I'm going slap and a pluck but I've got it dampened down here so the notes aren't ringing out slap pluck and then 
that last bit. Two, three, four. And then again, I'm using it there. kind of sort of like doing it it's kind of I'm hitting the hitting the strings and pucking and but up to speed it gives it a real percussive quality so let's listen to it up to speed two three four sort of like brings it out you know just gives it a bit more depth percussively it is a little bit tricky if I, if I was you I'd really try and break it down and do it slowly and do it bit by bit as well with the with the ghost notes remember bit by bit that's that's enough that's a small enough section there four four just loop it round three and then try and get that percussive vibe into your other licks as well well and riffs anything you're doing I, you know it's something that i probably do a little bit too much i have to kind of sort of like you know pull myself back a little um sometimes because I, it's something that i almost do without thinking about it kind of like i'm trying to fill the gaps almost and it sometimes does become a little bit too much so watch where you're putting it in but it's always a great thing to have it's like salt on your food it's always great to be able to put some salt on your food but obviously not too much if you have enjoyed this lesson make sure you click that like button below and if you want the backing track that i'm about to play along to make sure you hit the link below and it'll take you straight through to a page where you'll be able to download it take it easy get in the shed and i'll see you soon Thank mm -hmm. you.